Number 11. What are amphiprotic species and then illustrate with suitable equations? Okie dokie. So this is kind of like a definition question. Amphiprotic, you might know this as amphoteric. Amphoteric, amphiprotic, tomato, tomato. These types of species basically can act as either an acid or a base. So they are either ions or molecules that can act as either an acid or a base in certain situations. If it's going to act as an acid, it has the ability to lose or donate a hydrogen, an H+, a hydronium. If it's acting as the base, it can accept or gain, we'll say. Gain is a better word, an easier word than accept. So uh, we can gain one H plus, right? But if you can act as an acid, you have to have a hydrogen, right? Now, there are a lot of compounds out there that can act as an amphiprotic or an amphoteric species. So this type with the suitable equations, this could be a lot of different answers. You just got to pick the right molecule. There's tons of them. Let me give you like a general idea as a sure fact, um, a species that can exist as, you know, an acid or a base that's amphoteric or amphiprotic. These generally um, are seen as a acidic hydrogen in the front, right? You got to have at least one hydrogen in the front. Then you'll have maybe one other element or a couple of elements, and then you might see a negative in the back. Now, if you see something like this, this is definitely an amphiprotic species. So for example, if I see maybe H, uh, let's see, HPO4 with the two minus charge, totally. It's got both properties. I can see HSO4 with a minus charge, definitely amphiprotic. It has both of them. Um, if I have H just S with a minus charge, definitely amphiprotic, can go both ways because you can lose that hydrogen or you can gain a hydrogen by manipulating that charge. Now, there are some amphiprotic species out there that do not follow this general baseline, okay? They're neutral compounds, but they, they have to have those hydrogens in the front. So we'll say you will see the hydrogens in the front, but they will be neutral. They will not have a negative charge in the back. The one that everybody knows and loves is water, right? H2, oh, it's got the hydrogen in the front, so it can act as an acid, but it has a zero charge because it can gain a hydrogen. It could become a positive. That's totally fine. Now, this comes all back to Lewis structures that we learned about uh, and, you know, past chem questions, or not questions, but chapters. Another one would be H3N, which, whoop, which gets rearranged to NH3. So this one is interesting because you don't see those hydrogens in the front generally, but this one is amphiprotic or amphoteric because technically you have those hydrogens and you have a zero charge. So does it really matter which one I pick out of these to write the two equations that I need to show that it's going to be an acid or a base? Absolutely not. Um, I don't, I don't care <laughs> whichever one let's do, let's do NH3 because this one is the outlier here. Okay. So I'm going to say, okay, I have two equations here. I have NH3. And then I have it again. Now, one time, the NH3 has to act as the acid, right? We're going to show that NH3 is acting as the acid. And then in the other equation, we're going to show that NH3 is acting as the base. And that's how it's going to be amphiprotic or amphoteric. So if you're starting off with an acid, you need to add something that has to be a base. 
Doesn't matter what base you choose, I don't care, but you can never have two acids coming together or two bases coming together. It's always going to be one acid and one base. So if NH3 is acting as a base, you need to add it with a definite acid. Okie dokie. So now let's see. What's a definite base? Well, I think of our six strong bases that we all know and love and that we should memorize. Any six of them will do. Um, I'll just make it easy and I'll do the, the clear indication of a base and that's OH minus. Anytime that you see OH minus, it's for sure going to be acting as a base. For your acid, uh, pick one of your six strong acids, right? Any one of them, you know, any one of those will do. Let's go with HCl. Now, just keep in mind, you could have picked, you know, other acid or base here. It doesn't really matter. Now, let's just draw our yield sign. And let's now write the other two parts. Now, remember, the acid will always turn into the conjugate base. We've done tons of work here identifying what's going on as far as, you know, conjugates are always on the product side, and an acid will always turn into its conjugate base. And likewise, the base, when it's all said and done, will turn, and maybe I should have done this a little bit better like that, will turn into its conjugate acid. Now, all you have to do here is just exchange one hydrogen. And I wrote down here what's basically going on. An acid turning into its conjugate base loses one hydrogen. Whoop, let me just go up. Oh boy, okay. And then on the flip side, the base gains the hydrogen. So the hydrogen just doesn't vanish. It gets transferred from the acid to the base. So the base is going to gain one H and the acid is going to lose 1H. So if that's the case and the acid's going to lose, all you got to do is just drop this number down. So there were three hydrogens, but now its base conjugate is going to be NH2. And now you just have to adjust the charge. When you lose a hydrogen, you always subtract one. So there was a zero charge for ammonia, right? NH3 is zero. So I say, okay, I started with a zero minus one. Zero minus one is a negative one, or you could just say a negative. And now you just got to do the opposite for the base. The base will always gain a hydrogen. So OH, now it will be OH2. But if we just rearrange this, there you go. It's water. It was disguised as water. And then just check for the charge. If you gain a hydrogen, you always plus one. So the OH minus was a negative. So negative plus one. Negative one plus one is zero. And that's one answer. Now you just got to do the same thing for ammonia, NH3, acting as the base. So let's see. If it's acting as a base, remember, bases turn into conjugate acids now. So conjugate acid. Maybe I'll just put that over here. Okie dokie. And the acid will turn into its conjugate base. Okay, now we just got to figure out what is what. Remember, the base will always gain a hydrogen, and the acid will always lose a hydrogen. So, bases gain, that means that I add a hydrogen. So, NH3, 3 won't drop down to 2, it will bump up to a 4. So, now I have NH4. Now, you just have to adjust for the charge. You gained a hydrogen, so you add 1. There was no charge up here, so zero. So zero plus one. Zero plus one is a plus one, or just a plus. And then on the flip side, the acid will always lose one hydrogen. And there was only one hydrogen to lose. So 
get rid of it. So now it's just Cl. There was a zero. You lost a hydrogen, so minus one. So zero minus one is a negative one, or you could just say a negative. And that's it. These are my two equations that illustrate that NH3 is amphiprotic. It could act both as an acid or a base. And that's it. Hopefully this helped. Let me know in the comments. Subscribe to the channel. Thank you so much for viewing the video. And I really hope this is helping you guys out. Um, yeah, that's all I got for you guys. I'll see you in later lessons though. More chem ahead. Okay, bye-bye.